All right. Peace be with you. Now, as I was preparing for this morning, I looked up the Bible passages, the kind of Sunday it was, what I was supposed to be paying attention to, and I realized that today is Transfiguration Sunday, and it occurred to me that I've spoken to you, I've been lucky enough to be able to do that on more than one Transfiguration Sunday, at least twice before today, I think maybe three times. So with any luck, uh, third-ish time could be a charm, so we'll see, we'll see. Now, transfiguration is about a change, a serious, forever, bright, shining, amazing, and wonderful change. Change like we are embarking on here at church. We're working on our open and affirming covenant. We're starting open table. We're mentoring kids in our schools. We are alive and vibrant and doing incredibly hard work with a very seemingly little reward. Now, I encourage you at some time in the next few weeks, to read Matthew 17, the first part, verses 1 through 13, or Luke chapter 9, 28 through 36, that talks about the transfiguration. But today we're going to focus on a passage that means something to me. It's known as the parable of the vineyard. So if anyone knows me, you know that that's something that I care deeply about, vineyards. Okay? Um, this is going to be from Matthew 20. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about something I care not at all for, which is football. So if anyone is afraid that there might be a very deep freezing of anything later, it could be after today, after I talk about football. Today I'm going to need some kids to help me, though. So I'm hoping that some young people can come sit on these steps with me. Okay? Come on, Liam, have a seat. Tegan and Delaney are coming. Colin, come on up here. Okay, I'm going to read this Bible passage. Okay, you guys ready? For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them out in the vineyard to work. When he went out about 9 o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the fields, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same thing. Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the the vineyard owner came to the manager and said, call all the laborers in and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the same daily wage. Now when the first came, they were excited because they thought they could receive more. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these who worked only one hour and you gave them equal to us, who have borne the burden of all day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me to work for the wage? Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me and give these people what I desire? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Now, the fruit of the vineyard is important to me, sports or not, and yet here I find myself speaking on this topic. Now, I think more than one of you here today has some kind of sporting event in mind, some kind of sporting plans later today. Anybody? Okay. What's happening today? The what? What's that about? Football, two teams, right? Come together. Now, who likes football? You're with me, huh? Right? No football? Football? You like it. You don't like it. Okay, all right. Who likes commercials? Who's going to be spending the afternoon watching commercials? Okay. Who likes Super Bowl parties simply for the people that are going to be there and the snacks that are going to be served? Yes, me too. Now, two football teams have battled it out to finally get to the game, right? This is a big deal. Am I wrong? I don't know a lot about it. Is that right? The big game of the season. 
Now, I bet there are more than a few people praying for a positive outcome for their team. Who's a Panthers fan? Panthers fans? Anybody? Okay. How about Broncos? Who's a Lions fan forever, whether or not we go to the Super Bowl ever? All right, all right. Unfortunately for the Panthers and the Broncos, there's going to be only one winner, right? How many? One winner. Doesn't matter how hard the fans pray about it. Doesn't matter how hard the teams or the owners pray about it. There's going to be one winner. And who's it going to be? The Broncos? I thought you said you were a Panthers fan. Okay, all right, all right. Half of people won't get what they pray for this afternoon. Now, football is a pretty intense sport, and I don't know all the rules, to be honest. So we're not going to be playing football today. Darn, right? You came prepared to play football, didn't you? No, no, okay. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to talk about other sports for a second, because football is not the only thing that people care about. Who likes basketball? Basketball. Baseball. No soccer fans here, I bet. None. None. Okay. Now, I have noticed one thing about sports. Nobody says, we're number two. <laughs> right? Who, what do you want to be on the sports team? Number one. You want to be number one. Every team wants to be the best. So which would you rather be? Super Bowl champions or defeated in the Super Bowl? Champions. Would you rather be number two? Or number one, number one, do you want to be the first in the line in the lunchroom or the last person? First, okay. Do you want to be a winner or a loser? Of course, right? On your school papers, do you like to get the best grade or the worst grade? The best, right? Everybody wants to be the best. Would you rather be the president or the guy who shines the president's shoes? The president? I don't know if I'd want to be the president. I think I might like the shoe shining. Now, is anyone here a good runner? You? You're a good runner. Really good? Fast? All right. How about a little, a little race? Can we do that? All right, stand right here. What I'd like you to do is to run down to that door and come back. Okay, set. Did I say go? Ready, set, go. You got plans this afternoon? You want them tired out? Okay. Okay. Whoa, pretty fast, pretty fast. All right, but um, Braden, I forgot to start the timer. So can you do it again? Okay. Ready, set, go. I, didn't, I don't have a timer. We'll see. How many times do you think we can get him to do it? <laughs> All right. I think it was faster the first time, right? Does anyone think that? I think you were faster the first time. You want to try two out of three? One more time? One more time? OK. Now, that was pretty fast, right? Can you agree? Yes? Okay, now who else wants to try it? Tegan? All right. Gavin, you want to go too? Line up here. Why don't you guys just run to that door, that purple carpet and back. Ready? Set? Go. Right there. Come back, come back, come back. Whoa, good job, good job. Anybody else want to do it? All right. Well, let's pass out some awards, shall we? Everybody stand up. Stand up. We don't have time for everybody to run today, so I'm going to pass out some awards for who's fastest. Okay? Get all together here. Ready? Like you. You. There we go. Look at this. The best. Right here, right here. You're not done. You're not done. All right. 
Now, how do you feel? Feel good? You're probably more tired than other people, right? Okay. I imagine some of you are thinking to yourself, well, that's not fair. Cassidy got one. She didn't even have to run. Braden ran twice, right? Didn't race anybody. He got one. Tegan and Gavin got confused in the middle. We don't know who was fastest, right? But everybody got an award. Is that fair? It's fair? They did? Some people just sat there. Okay? But you know what? They're my medals, and I can give them away if I want to, right? And you guys can keep them. You can keep them. All right? Now, there are times in the Bible when stories are confusing, just like this one. All right? They might seem backwards, or they might seem upside down. In the story today, Jesus tells us about a landowner who was hiring people to work in his vineyard, which is like a farm. Okay? He hired some of them early in the morning, some of them in the middle of the day, and some of them right before quitting time. When it was time to pay the workers, he gave them all the same amount of money. Now, how would you feel if you were the worker that worked all day and got the same as the person who started in the afternoon? Yeah, you might think, that's not right. I worked hard. Okay? They complained, hey, that's not fair. You paid the workers who worked only one hour the same as you paid me, and I worked all day. The owner of the vineyard said, I'm not being unfair to you. I paid you a fair wage, and that part's important. I paid you a fair wage. Don't I have the right to do with my money what I want to do? Are you jealous because I'm generous? Now, this parable teaches us that God doesn't treat those who have worked longer, prayed harder, done more, better than those who didn't do those things, better than those that started later, God sees everyone as equally important. And the same is true about our service to God. Serving God is a gift, and we need to serve God faithfully, not thinking that we are more important than someone else who's serving God in a different way. Maybe they're coming in later. No one can earn more from God than anyone else. Each person's work is valuable, and if you are doing the most that you can, then you're doing it. Jesus taught us that in his kingdom, he doesn't want us to be pushing to be first in line. Have we ever done that? Ever wanted to be first? Yeah, I have. I have. Okay. He doesn't want us to think that what we want is more important than what other people want. God won't decide who's going to win the Super Bowl based on how hard people are praying for the outcome today. God wants to reward us when we think about others first and put ourselves back. When we say, no, you go first. I'll go after you. You'll be doing your best work when you're putting others first and when you're being generous. Do you know what generous means? It's a big word. Do you know, Colin? Kind? Yeah? Okay, what else? Sharing abundantly, a lot, right? Giving as much as you can. That's generous, okay? Now, the teachings of Jesus and being generous are different than what some people think of today. We live in a world where people want to be first, right? They want power and influence. It's an election year, folks. You've seen this on TV. Sometimes we find it hard to see generosity going to other people. We might think, we worked for it, we prayed for it, and they're going to get something that we deserved. It's not fair. It depends, I guess, on where you see yourself in the line, what time you started your work. So let's try to think of it another way. The landowner is generous, and generous means giving all that you can, right? Giving more than what is needed or deserved or earned. It means giving because you can give, right? like we are doing here at church. How are ways that we're giving more, giving every day? How are we doing that? That's true. What else? We're starting a feeding ministry, right? We're going to be giving food to people. We work already with Flat River. We have people going to schools and working with kids. That's generous. That is generous. And because God is generous with us, we need to be generous with others. We don't need to worry about who's number one, right? 
Or number two, that's right, we don't need that. If we're honest with ourselves and with God, we don't know where in the line we are standing when we started our work. We don't know if we're first, we'll never get to a championship, we won't get a Super Bowl ring. I'm guessing most of us won't, although I did see you can buy them on the internet. We don't often get medals for our work, but we get to choose. We can always live our life saying, this is why we're number one. Or we can commit our lives to putting other people first. So I want you to be glad you got a medal today. Not because you were the best or the fastest or even got a chance to run. I want you to be glad because getting a medal reminds you that the best person puts someone else first. And our church does that. I know you do that. We're not the biggest church. Probably not the coolest we might not be the most exciting, but we are generous in amazing ways. We feed people, right? We love people. We teach people. We put others first in our lives, don't we? Do you? You do, don't you? Right? We are working hard and we should feel good about that. Now as for the football game today, one team will be considered the best. One team will be the Super Bowl champions. One team has to settle for being second. But I hope that everyone remembers that football today is just a game. And whether your team wins or loses, change your attitude about it. Because change can be good, right? Say that with me. Change can be good. Don't be a sore loser claiming that it's not fair. And don't be a prideful winner. Focus on living generously with God, because win or lose, responding to God's generosity is the real medal, the real prize, and the last will be first. Got it? Put other people first. Thank you.